Good morning and welcome to Graced for Today. Blessings, everybody. God's blessings be upon you and may his favor continue to guide you and open doors before you. My prayers of the Lord will bless you and keep you. And may everything that you do prosper. May every endeavor cause increase to come. And I tell you what, I'm expecting the Lord to move for you. I'm expecting God to show himself strong on your behalf. For you, right for you. And when we are looking for the favor of God, the hand of God, the glory of God. Hey, Sam Travis, you are first on. Look at you. Well, you're the first I see. Blessings to you, brother. We are grateful for all that the Lord has done and what he's doing in our lives. God remains faithful. He's a redeemer. He redeems our lives from destruction and he restores the years. No weapon formed against us will produce what the enemy intended. What a word from the Lord. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sister Brandy Rogers. Good morning, y'all. Hey, Sister Gwen. Good to see you last night. God bless everybody. Hey, if you are at the convocation and, um, you know, we wouldn't need to, you know, I like taking pictures. I just usually don't think about them. So, but if you're there, we need to take a selfie before y'all go. So it's like a post them on Grace for today. So y'all remind me and we could do that before we leave. So I can put them on my page. All right. So there you go. Let's do that. I'm going to give y'all a few moments to come on and then we're going to uh, get started. We're moving today to chapter 43. I know we've been in chapter 42 for a bit, but we're moving to chapter 43 today and we're going to look and see, you know, you have to understand, Jacob, I'm supposed to be waiting for y'all, aren't I? Okay. Don't forget to share. Share as soon as you come on. I'd appreciate that. And you know where we are now. Okay. I'm supposed to be waiting. Hey, Lady Janelle. Okay. Hey, Lady Janelle. We're praying for you, honey. We're praying your strength. I know that the Lord carries us because the scripture says he is the God of all comfort who comforts us so we can comfort someone else. I know that God is able and he is so willing to help us through our times of grief. Amen and amen. All right. And I love you bunches, but you know that already. All right, y'all, let's go to chapter 43. Let's just start at verse one. I want us to understand that Jacob said, my boy ain't going nowhere. I'm not sending Benjamin anywhere. I don't care what that man said down there in Egypt. My boy ain't going nowhere. But the thing is this. Though Joseph sent back a lot of food, they didn't know it was Joseph. He sent back plenty of food. Sooner or later, their provision was going to run out. Sooner or later, the provision was going to run out. And they were going to have to go back. Good morning, Pastor Brent. They were going to have to go back to Egypt. Because the famine was not over. The famine was not over. The famine was not over. Good morning, Miss Gloria. So here now, the famine is still going on. I know sometimes we, we don't understand. Oh, let me reduce this. I forgot. Don't forget to share. Please share when you come. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Annie, Lou, Annie, Lou, Annie Louise Ingram. And... Um, you know, y'all give such encouragement. I appreciate that. Sometimes it is difficult. I will tell you that. I'm a Josephine. All right. <laughs> you need to know where you are and what season you're in. Sometimes we have no idea. We have no idea. We're just rolling along. But God will bring us. Isn't that a song where you say, God, what is it? What is that song? It says, Jesus brought me out all right. I don't know all of that either. Okay, but it's an old song. Anyway, somebody know it. But here, sooner or later, the food was going to run out. And they were going to have to go back because the famine was still. Thank you so much, Pastor Brent. Lord knows. I'm not even going to go there. I was about to go somewhere with Pastor Brent. I'm not going to even go. I'm going to stay right here. All right, so. The famine was still ravaging. It was still going on. And the longer it lasted, the more people needed to rely. Listen, the thing is this. 
God will strategically place you in a situation where Joe, like Joseph, where you can be a blessing and the only place people can go to is you because God gave you the plan of action. It doesn't mean you need to get the big head or arrogance. You are just a conduit. You are just the tool. You are just the means through which God is going to cause everybody to be blessed. God wants, we sing that song, um, he gave me my ears, something, so I can, whatever, y'all know that song, use me, Lord, anyway, y'all know that song, uh, somebody help me, y'all know the song, where Heather at, she know all these songs, we need to remind ourselves that God wants to use us for his glory, he wants to use us for, hey, Jamarcus McGee, good to see you, brother, thank you, Sister Holly, I'm available to you. I'm, I will go look the lyrics up and so y'all will get it. But that's it. He gave us these things for us to be a conduit. Lord, that's it. Thank you. Well, all y'all knew it. I was struggling. <laughs> that's why y'all need to pray. So we should, that, that song says all of that. My ears are to hear for him. My hands are to reach out to others for him. We are to be conduits for him. Joseph was a conduit for him. My voice is a conduit for him. For him. God will strategic, when we stay right, as Sister Holly said, when we learn who we are, not in arrogance and pride, but when we learn who we are and walk humbly before our God, he can move us to higher places. He can move us where he wants because then he knows I've got all of you. I can use you for my glory. I can take you. I can, I can give you much. Because you're not going to squander it. You're not going to be arrogant. You're going to follow the plan. And you're going to do with the things I put in your hand what I want you to do. Joseph didn't squander anything. Even, y'all know the story, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this little, I'm going to tell you. Even when his people came, he didn't stop doing his job in Egypt. But God brought him there to be a conduit to save much. This is what he said. To save much people alive. He was the answer. He was the key. And God can only use people who are going to return the glory to him. What did Joseph say when he went to interpret the king's dream? He said, I've heard, the king said, I've heard that you can interpret dreams. See if you can tell me this. And, and Joseph's response was, he said, God, God is the one who is going to reveal to me what your dream was so you can have peace. We need to be clear. It's not in us. Yes, he deposits in us. What, what is needed, but it's him working in us. It is God who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Lord, work in me your will. Let my will become agreeable with yours. Let my will become your will. Help me only to desire what... I got to get to my lesson. Let me get to my lesson. I'm sorry. Y'all yeah, know I kind of springboarded there. Okay, come back here. So the famine was sore in the land, still raging. When Brandy Rogers, when you just posted that, all the glory belongs to God. Even when we're rearing our children. Yes, we, we want to raise and rear our children. I know people say you raise cattle and you rear children. I got it. Whatever the case, we're from the South. We raising children. We raise them out in the field. All right, all right. So we, we, when we rear our children, 
Children are the heritage of the Lord. We want to make sure that we are giving them back to God so that when they grow up, when they mature, that they look like God. They honor God. Yes, I want you want to do a good job with your children, that they are intelligent, productive, good citizens, honorable, respectable. Yes. All the glory, honor, praises all day, it belongs. Yes, to him. Here, let me get back to my lesson. So, it came to pass, verse 2, 43 and 2. When they had eaten up all the corn which they had brought out of Egypt. This took some time. This took some time. This took some time. Because all the brothers went except one. Ten brothers plus the servants. They all brought back a lot of stuff. Here, the father Jacob says, Go again, buy us a little food. And Judah spake to him saying, the man, the man <laughs> did solemnly protest unto us saying, you shall not see my face except your brother be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. But if thou will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, you shall not see my face except your brother be with you. They are reminding Jacob what the man Joseph said. You got to bring your brother. You got to bring your brother. Joseph, Jacob already said he ain't going. But that was before the food ran out. Sometimes desperate measures will force you to take desperate actions. Things you wouldn't normally do. Joseph, Jacob had already said, I'm not sending him because Jacob, Joseph is already gone. I don't know. And y'all left Benjamin down there. Right? No, was it Benjamin? Wait, Reuben down there, somebody down there. And now you want to take, you want to take Benjamin too? No, no. But now he's forced to make a decision. One thing that Joseph had learned was how to wait. He had learned how to wait. We going to have to learn how. Simeon, thank you so much. Appreciate that. We, we're going to have to learn how to wait. Because we can't get it all right now. We're going to learn how to, how to wait. Here. And Israel said... Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me? What as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? Here, and this is what I was trying to tell you all before. Jacob is saying to his sons, why y'all even tell the man that you had a brother? Why did you even tell the man you had a brother? Why did you need to open your mouth and say it? So now who's the one talking too much? They were talking about Joseph talking a lot. Who's talking too much now? It's them. Verse 4, 6 from my, um, verse 6 from my mama's old Bible says like this. Why did you ever tell him you had another brother? Israel moaned. Why did you have to treat me like that? Isn't that something? But the man specifically asked us about our family. It should have been a clue, but they didn't catch it. They told him he wanted to know whether our father was still living. And he asked us if we had another brother. So we told him. How could we know that he was going to say, bring me your brother? They were still clueless. Judah said to his father, send the lad with me and we will be on our way. Otherwise, we will all die of starvation. And not only we, but you and all our little ones. Those were two important things. You're going to die, Jacob, and our children, your posterity, they're going to die. I guarantee his safety. If I don't bring him back to you, then let me bear the blame forever. 
for we could have gone for we could have gone and returned by this time if you had let him come. He said, we could have gone and already come back by this time if you had let us go earlier. So their father is, I got to go. So their father finally said to them, if it can't be avoided, then at least do this. Load your donkeys with the best products of the land. Take them to the man as gifts. Take double money so that you can pay back what was in the mouths of your sacks as it was probably someone's mistake. May God and take your brother and go. May God Almighty give you mercy before the man so that he will release Simeon and return Benjamin. And if I must bear the anguish of their deaths, then so be it. He was at such a loss. Starve or send my other son. What a predicament. Sometimes we feel like we're between what they call a rock and a hard place. But beloved, we must learn. We don't know what's going on, but we can trust God. We must. What's that song? I have no other choice but to trust you. That's all I can do. Sometimes, all the time, but when you're between that, in that straight, that narrow place, no other choice. Sometimes I can't go back. I can't go forward. I'm just going to have to trust you. You will get me out. You will get me around. Right. I'm going to worship while I wait. I'm just going to trust you in this. You know the way that I take. And you'll get me out. Jacob says, if this is, this is what we got to do, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. But you know what? The Lord did. All right, we'll pick this up in the morning. Yeah, today's Thursday. Pick it up in the morning. Father, thank you so much that you're unfolding and revealing to us your truths. Help us to trust you. Even when we don't understand, we will not let fear Doubt and unbelief saturate our minds, our hearts. Help us to trust you above all else. Even when we're overwhelmed, we will trust you. Let your peace envelop our hearts and our minds. And we'll give you praise and we'll thank you for it. Be our healer today. Give speedy recovery. Heal us from the inside out. Bring healing to those who have health challenges. Those who are post-surgery. Thank you in advance. We thank you for all these things even now. We receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. Y'all, don't forget to share the video. Type in Catch the Replay. Hashtag Graced for today. Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. All right. Hey, put a pin right there. Well, I'll be speaking today for just about 10 minutes, maybe. And uh, I'm going to live stream it, I think. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, I'll share it and uh, I'll post it. And uh, at our women's, what are we having? Women's Day for our convocation. Um, I don't know that we're live streaming the service, but I'll post my little part probably. And um, I hope you'll be blessed by it. We're going to talk about um, um, leadership and um, yeah. God's developing us as leaders. You too. All right. So join me then, but certainly join me in the morning. And uh, until then, remember this time spent in the word of God is never wasted in you. Have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody.